Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire and I'm glad you're here. Today I wanted to share with you some fun hacks for using the Misty stamping tool. I'm also going to show you the new version of the Misty stamping tool because I've gotten a load of questions about it. So I'll start out first by doing a comparison between the new Misty stamping tool and the old. And I'll go into detail on it because when you make an investment like this, you really want to understand what you're getting. Also, after that, I will share with you some newer hacks that I've been doing with my Misty, and hopefully it'll help you out. Okay, so this is the new Misty stamping tool. It's a newer version of the very popular original Misty stamping tool. I will disclose here that I was given this tool at the Creativation Show a few months ago. However, they did not ask me to do this video and I have since purchased a couple more or ordered a couple more on my own dime because I do believe this is a very good tool that has helped me a lot with crafting. So I just wanted to say that up front that I truly believe it's a great tool. Okay, so this is the newer version. It looks a little similar at first to the older version, but there are many different details, and that's what I'm gonna go through. Because if you have the original Misty stamping tool, you may not need this. You may be perfectly fine with what you have, but some people use theirs a lot, and the improvements might be something worth investing in, the, um, in for them. Okay, so here on the left we have the new version, and on the right is the original. This one is very loved. This is the one that Lila actually uses. So it's a little inky, but that's okay. It still works great, and I could take the time to clean it, but I haven't. You can see the size is very similar, and the functionality is similar too, but there are those key little differences that really do add up. So the original version here on the right has the pink stickers for the rulers on the side and there are other color stickers available that you could replace if you wanted to change the colors. There is also another original Misty that came up out a few months ago from Hero Arts and that's the one that you see here. And it is the black version, which I just really like when I'm crafting and I feel like it looks better in videos. So that's why you've seen me using that one a lot lately, but it works just like the original Misty. It's just a different color. Now, in addition to this original size Misty, there is a mini Misty that's been available for some time in the original design, and that's the smaller version that many people like. There's also a giant Misty called the Memory, where you can even foot, fit a 12 by 12 inch scrapbook page in it. So that's another option of the original design. Currently, the My Sweet Petunia folks are only offering the new design in the original size that you see here on the left. I think they're going to come out with a Misty eventually or a mini Misty eventually in the new design, but not yet. One more thing I wanted to clarify before we look at the design changes is the mouse pad on the inside. This is the Hero Arts Misty mouse pad version because it's got the black grid lines. I do recommend getting the mouse pad for whatever Misty you have, and the mouse pad will fit in the new design also. So you'll see that here. The uh, Misty does not come with the mouse pad. You need to buy that separately. It does come with a foam insert, so you can use it as is. I just like the mouse pad too. Okay, let's start looking at the details of the new design that make it different from the original. The first thing that stands out significantly to me is the lid. With this uh, new Misty stamping tool, the lid has a slight overhang there when closed. This is great because it allows you to easily grab it to open it. In the past, some people would put like a little piece of tape to create a handle to open and close it easier. This kind of solves that for you. You can easily open it. There's also like a little lip over here in the middle that makes it easy for you to grab it when it's open and then close it easily. So that lid design right there is a huge change. Now to compare it to one of the original versions, the lid on that is flush, and that's why some people decided to put a little handle on it because it's easier to grab it. But with the new version, you don't have to worry about that. Another nice thing about the lid is the edges. On the new Misty stamping tool, the edges are much smoother. They're kind of rounded out and the corner is rounded. So it's just a softer design that if you're like me and you mass produce with the Misty, it makes it easier on the hands. And here's a comparison to one of the original Misty's, and you can see this has the sharp corner and edges. So it's nice and smoothed out now. Another change to the lid is the grid is now a light gray. 
So when you put white cardstock in your MISTI to stamp on it, you can see the grid when it's closed. See how you can see the grid nicely? The grid is part of the lid. It's not going to rub off. But I like that because I'm mostly, I would say, stamp on white cardstock. I can see the grid easily on this new version. Now in comparison to the older design, the grid is white, so it's not as visible when you have white cardstock in there. So you have a grid line now that's a little more visible but does not get in the way. Another difference with the lid is the new lid isn't as floppy. <laughs> I don't know what other word to use. When you open it, it doesn't fall open. Now, I don't know if this will loosen over time and be like the original lid, but I have used this quite a bit off screen and I have found that it stayed like this where it kind of stands up when you open it, which I think is really cool. So you can control how far you open and close it. Another design change with the new Misty is the hinges. The hinges have improved quite a bit, including the little piece in it is metal. And what is great about the new hinges is there's no wiggle on the door. On the original design, the door had a little bit of a wiggle because of how the hinges were designed. You can see here that the insert on the original is the plastic piece, where on the new, it has a metal piece. So this makes a big difference to me because I know it'll hold up even better over time, and I can be certain that it stamps where I want it each and every time. Another thing about the new design is it's more smooth. You can see like the side is one piece. It's not glued together pieces. So it just seems like it's going to hold up a lot better over time. Now my favorite of all of the new features is the ruler on the edges. You can see that the measurements are now kind of engraved in the side and they have the inches and the centimeters, which they only had the inches before. But for me, the improvement with this, these ruler edges is that it's engraved and it's perfectly lined up. In the original version, the rulers were stickers that were placed and sometimes the placement was a little bit off. So you would get your measurements a little bit off. Let me show you what I mean. So here is the new Misty and I'm putting my white cardstock right into the bottom corner. When I put my white cardstock into the bottom corner, the bottom of that lines up perfectly with the first tick mark and you can see the measurements are perfect for my four and a half by five and a half inch piece of white cardstock that I've put inside. So I can be sure my measurements are just right. And if you do any kind of um, repetitive stamping, having those measurements right is helpful. Now here is an older Misty. Now when I put white cardstock into this, you'll see that the first little tick mark there on the left doesn't line up with the white cardstock as well. So it shows the same piece of cardstock actually measures less than five and a half by four and a half. So for me, that's important. There's also finer measurements. It goes down to, I think, 16th of an inch. So my engineering loving mind really appreciates that difference. Okay, another change with the new Misty stamping tool is there's a little bed for your magnet when you're not using it. I call it a little bed. It's this little area over here. There's a lip to the right of it so that the magnet doesn't fall out. So you can be sure it stays there. You just kind of turn it to get the magnet off. Now I will show you that I always put tape on my magnet because this is a strong magnet and it can be hard to pick up from the Misty. So I'm going to show you real quick how I do um, put a little handle on it. I just use any type of tape. You could use cute washi tape. I just had purple tape here and I put a couple pieces over it. I build up a couple layers so that it is durable and it'll stay on there for a long time. So I've got this doubled up here and then I'll just trim off the excess and now I've got a handle for my magnet. And the nice thing is even if you put a handle on your magnet, it still can go to sleep over there in its little bed. You just pop it in there and you can close the door, no problem. So it's fun to have that little home there. Now you could also do this on the original Misty design, but there is a lip there to be certain that it doesn't come out now. So. It's just a small little feature that I think is nice and well designed and a nice improvement. Now I just wanted to share once again that the mouse pad is a separate thing that I think is really useful to get. This a, a new Misty comes with this black foam pad. You leave the foam pad in when you stamp with clear stamps and remove it when you stamp with cling stamps, which I'll demonstrate later. Now you could definitely use this. I think it still does come with some pieces of grid paper 
in with Numisti that you can put in there also. However, I really prefer the mouse pad. You can buy the My Sweet Petunia version, which is the pink grid, or you can buy the version that was designed for Hero Arts, which is the black grid, which is what you'll probably see me using in most videos. I do like that the grid is helpful in doing certain techniques, which I'll demonstrate later. And you can also clean this pretty easily. So you can reuse it over and over again, even if you get ink on it. Okay, now that we've taken a close look at the new Misty stamping tool, let's look at how you use the tool. I'm first gonna just show the basics of using a tool for those who haven't before, and then I'm going to go into some tricks and hacks that I do. So here I'm just gonna do basic stamping with the clear stamp. This is an adorable stamp set from Lawn Fawn. You just remove whatever stamps you want to use, and then you can keep the pad in your Misty stamping tool, and you'll stamp with that underneath it. So here I just have it held in place using my bar magnet, and then I can stamp with it. If I didn't get a good impression, I could just ink it up and stamp it again. I also like to stamp multiple times when I'm creating, so you can always rotate your paper and do another image too. Okay, now if you want to stamp with a cling stamp, you remove the pad inside. This is one of my favorite background stamps, the Simon Says Stamp You Matter stamp. You can see it's well loved. You just remove the pad, place the cling stamp into the Misty, close the door, and now you're ready to stamp. Now when I have a stamp like this that has text here or a pattern I wanna make sure is straight, here's a trick that I do. I have my piece of cardstock here, and I'm going to put a little bit of temporary adhesive on the back of my cardstock piece. I will then line this up with the stamp, the adhesive is face up, and I'll line it up, make sure it's straight with the stamp. Then I close my Misty upside down, press, flip over, and now when I open it, my, my uh, piece of cardstock is temporarily adhered in the Misty so that when I stamp, my stamping will be straight. So now I'm just using some Concord and Ninth ink. You can use any ink you want. And go ahead and stamp this, and you'll notice when I first stamp it, I didn't really do a good job with my inking. So I can just go ahead and ink it up once again and stamp it, and it'll stamp in the exact same place, which will give me even better results. Now that I've shown the basics of using a stamping tool for anyone who has never used one before, let's talk about some tricks and hacks that I find helpful. Some of these you may have seen in one of my videos, some are new. And if you haven't checked out my first Misty Hacks video, I will link to it here and you can check that out. Today I'll be covering some other things. Now, the first idea that I'm going to share is how to create a bunch of sentiment strips very quickly using the Misty stamping tool. I have chosen a sentiment from the Mama Elephant Hooray Wishes stamp set. Isn't that little group of kids there so cute? I have my sentiment here, and I am going to stamp it onto this white cardstock repeatedly, and then we'll cut it up. Now I'm using the grid on my mouse pad to line up this stamp. I'm making sure that it is centered between two horizontal grid lines. So watch right about here. I'm gonna make sure it's straight and center between those two grid lines. These are a quarter inch apart. So now I'll put my white cardstock into my Misty, ink up my stamp, and stamp it right on the top corner. When I stamp sentiments, I like to stamp lightly first, and then ink it up and stamp again lightly to get a good impression. I don't wanna to press too hard and get a smushed sentiment. When I'm done with that one, I just move my paper up one grid line in the background. So watch, I'll move it up one grid line, ink it up, and stamp it again. So each of these are a quarter inch apart, so I can cut them to create a bunch of sentiments. That's the advantage of having that grid mouse pad in there or some sort of grid paper or something in your stamping tool. So you can create repetitive background stamp designs. So maybe a stripe stamp where you do a rainbow in the background, many different repetitive patterns that you can create. In this case, I have a bunch of sentiments I could have kept going. Now I'm taking it over to my trimmer. This is the Tim Holtz trimmer and the grid lines on that background of the trimmer are also a quarter inch apart. So I just move to one grid line and cut, move it one grid line over again and cut and continue to do that. And that way each of my sentiment strips will be cut to a quarter of an inch with the stamping centered on each. Now I may only need one for my card, but I can save the extras for others, or this is handy if you mass produce. 
This is one hack that I use quite a bit and you've probably seen me doing videos. If your sentiment is taller, you can do two grid lines when you do your stamping and cutting. Okay, my next hacks involve some accessories that I think are really helpful when you have a stamping tool. The first accessory is the Creative Corners from My Sweet Petunia. These are designed to work with the Misty or any stamping tool. These are the pieces that are included in the set and there are many ways you can use them. I'm just going to show you a few of the basics and also the ones that I find most helpful. So here I have a sentiment from the Simon Says Stamp Vacation Time stamp set. Notice this is a long sentiment and it might be tricky to line it up straight so that you have a straight sentiment, which is something that my eye always notices if I don't have it straight. If I just laid it down, it might be a little wonky like this and have a little bit of a curve. So my trick with a long sentiment like this is to use one of the creative corners. I like to use the L shape creative corner this makes sure that you have your sentiment straight. So I just lay it down in the general area where I want my sentiment to be. Then I take the L piece and push it right up against it. When it's pushed up against it, I close the door on my Misty, which grabs the stamp, and then I remove the creative corner, and then I can ink up and stamp my image. And I can be sure that the sentiment is straight and not curved, and also straight in relation to the edge of my cardstock. In the creative quarter accessories, there are also two triangle pieces, which are very helpful when you want to create a diagonal line or do diagonal stamping. Now I use this triangle quite often because I find it's at a nice angle for a diagonal sentiment, which is a great way to kind of change up your card from having everything straight. So you can once again, push the edge against your stamp, close the door on your Misty, take out the creative corner, and now you can stamp at a nice angle and be sure that your sentiment is straight. I could shift this down and repeat stamp this if I wanted to. The other two pieces in the creative corners I use quite a bit, and these are the two corner pieces with the magnets in them. Say you have a piece of cardstock and your image is larger than the cardstock or you want it to hang off the edge of your cardstock. See how the edge of the Misty is in the way there on the left? These pieces are very helpful for that. So I'll put one in the corner here. There is another one that you can use in a different spot if you want to, or you can put them both together to make your cardstock be even farther from the corner if you need to. But in this case, I only need one. I'll put the other magnet in there to hold it. Now I can be certain that my cardstock is straight and I have plenty of room to stamp this image across that piece of cardstock. Now there are a few different ways that you could do this and you could also just trust your magnet to hold it anywhere in the Misty, but those corners are really helpful if you have something that you want to stretch across a piece of cardstock and be sure that it stays straight. Another inexpensive accessory for the Misty that I find very helpful is a transparency grid. You could create your own or you can buy one at Simon Says Stamp. This grid is four and a quarter by five and a half, which is a typical note card size. You can lay it over your note card or cardstock and use that grid to help you line things up and center them. So say I want this sentiment right smack dab in the middle of my card. I can use the grid lines to allow me to get it straight and centered. The grid also kind of holds onto this stamp so you can move it around and it won't stick to your fingers as much. It sticks to the transparency instead. So you can arrange a bunch of images, make sure they're all straight, remove the grid, and then stamp them. Here I just stamped it right in the center of the cardstock. So you've probably seen me use this grid transparency many times in videos. It's very handy and an inexpensive tool. Okay, my next hack for my Misty stamping tool is one that I've been doing off screen quite a bit, but I haven't shared in a video yet because I really wanted to test it out and make sure I loved it before sharing and I'm over the moon about it. You'll be seeing me use this hack in future videos too. So my hack is to create my own sticky mat to use inside of my Misty stamping tool on certain occasions, which I'll talk about. Now there are many different sticky mats you can try and I'm sure people have used many in the past. Um, I tried creating my own with a piece of plastic and some temporary spray adhesive. I tried everything. And the one that I had the best result with was to create a sticky mat that's meant for one of those electric die cutting machines like a scan and cut or silhouette. And I get one of the large mats and I cut it down to fit inside of my Misty stamping tool. 
I'll link to the particular one that I used. It's really big so I can cut additional mats from it when this one starts to wear. Now I also am going to try out some other sticky mats that I'll talk about in the future, but so far this is the one that I've been using and I've had luck with. So I cut the giant mat down to be a piece that fits perfectly inside of my Misty, so it's basically the same size as the mouse pad. Now it's sticky, facing up is sticky, so I can put cardstock anywhere in there and it'll hold it there while I do stamping. So remember earlier I used a creative corner. This time I'm just using the mat to hold it in place. The magnet also helps, but sometimes the magnet can be in the way of a small piece of cardstock, so the sticky mat is helpful. Now you'll notice I am going to get ink on the stink, sticky mat, not stinky, sticky, uh, on the sticky mat. That's okay. It'll stain it. I don't care. I'm just using the sticky part of this. I just wipe it with a dry cloth or with a wet cloth, and I find that the stick lasts for a while. I'm sure there are tricks out there to um, keep the stick going, but I haven't had any problems. I've heard you can clean these sticky mats if they lose their stick or spray additional spray adhesive, temporary spray adhesive on it to renew the stickiness. But I found that the stick on this has always stayed nicely for me, so I can use it over and over again in my Misty. Now I don't always use a sticky mat, just when I find that it's a helpful trick. Here's another example. Say you want to stamp this flower onto the circle die cut that I had. You can just put the circle anywhere on the sticky mat, lay your stamp on top. See a magnet would be hard to use with this circle. Now you can stamp right onto that circle and the sticky mat will hold it in place. Now I store my sticky mat underneath my foam pad so whenever I need it, it's there. And again, I don't use it all the time, just when I find it to be handy. Another time a sticky mat is um, helpful is when you're doing background cling stamps and you want to make sure your cardstock is straight. Just like I showed you before, where I put a little temporary adhesive on the back side of the cardstock, in this case, I'm just going to instead use the sticky mat. I've removed the foam pad from my Misty, lining up my cardstock on my stamp, put my sticky mat inside. Now I can close my Misty upside down. The sticky mat will grab that cardstock in the perfect alignment. It'll hold it there as we stamp on it. So now I can stamp, I will get ink on the sticky mat, but it doesn't bother me. Now I don't use electric die cutters much, so I don't have much knowledge on how to care for your sticky mat and make it last and clean it and such. I'm hoping some of you out there that are watching who use these sticky mats for other things know how to care for them and make them last as much as long as possible. And I'm hoping you'll share some of those in the comments below. When I find some good tips, I will share them to the pinned comment on this video so you can check them all out. Okay, another way this sticky mat is handy is if you have a little cardstock scrap, a tiny little piece, and you want to use it for a sentiment strip. So I just have that little scrap of cardstock, I put it on the sticky mat, lined up my stamp, and then that sticky mat held it in place as I added a little stamp sentiment onto it. So you can really make the most of small pieces of cardstock in your Misty stamping tool if you use the sticky mat. So I'll come back to other ways to use a sticky mat a little bit later in this video, but next I wanted to focus on different ways you can use your Misty stamping tool to get precision die cutting with your stamping. So many of us use coordinating dies for our stamps. There are many ways you can get good results and I'm gonna show you a few. To demonstrate this, I'm using this adorable stamp set from Mama Elephant. Now I have one of the stamp images and the coordinating die. I've already used my Misty to stamp the image and I have the stamp still in my Misty in the same spot. I also use the coordinating die to cut from a piece of plain white cardstock. You can see the die cut to the left. Now I'm taking the negative space and lining it up around my stamped image in the Misty. And I can look and see that it's nice and even around it. I use my magnet to hold the negative space there. Now I can pop in my die cut, ink up my stamp, and then stamp onto the die cut. And I can be sure that the image is stamped nicely and evenly inside of the coordinating die cut. So you can see I have a nice white trim around it. Here is another hack. It really doesn't involve the Misty, but it is a way to get good stamping on a coordinating die. What you do is you stamp your image and then you take a negative space die cut and line it up once again around that stamped image. 
you use a little bit of tape to hold the negative space die cut in place. Then you take your die and pop it right into the opening. It fits kind of like a little puzzle piece. And then you tape that in place. Now you can run that through your die cut machine as is. And when it comes out, you'll have cut your stamped image out with a perfect white trim around the edge. So if you have trouble getting your coordinating die to be lined up with the stamped image, those two hacks work. Here's another thing you can do if you want to do many images at once, and that is to use the coordinating dies to cut a bunch from white cardstock. You keep the negative space and you use that to line up your stamping. So here I have my negative space, and you've seen me do this many times in videos. Usually I put purple tape behind it, but this time I'm using my sticky mat. So I put the negative space onto my sticky mat, and now I pop in my little die cut. Now I can take the stamped images and line them up with those die cuts. It's very easy to line it up this way because you see the outline edge of the die cut when you look from the side. So once I have it lined up, I close the MISTI to grab that stamp, and I'll do that with the others. Sometimes it's even easier to line up the stamp with the opening, not even putting the die cut in. Just look from the side, sorry about that. Look from the side, make sure you have it lined up. Once you have them lined up with the openings, you can close the door on your MISTI, pick them up, and now you're ready to stamp on a bunch of die cuts. So now I can pop in uh, three of the die cuts, and the sticky mat behind it will hold them in place as we do our stamping. You could do any of these three tricks, or you can do a combination of each. Just try them all out and see which makes sense for you. If you, have struggle, if you struggle with stamping onto a coordinating die cut, one of these might be helpful. So there you have it, a closer look at the new MISTI stamping tool. I'm hoping that by going into the detailed differences that you can decide if it's something that you would want to invest in. Also, I shared a few hacks, and I really encourage you to check out my other Misty hack video, which I have linked here at the top right and in my description below. I also think it's important to remind you that you don't need to have a stamping tool to do stamping. You can use acrylic blocks. That's what I did for many, many years. So if you only stamp occasionally, do that. If you don't have trouble getting things straight, then just use acrylic blocks. The Misty stamping tool is for those of us who struggle with straight stamping or do a lot of stamping. So just keep that in mind. This is just a tool you'll see me use a lot in videos because it's helpful to me. If you're interested in the products I talk about, they are linked uh, below in my YouTube description. In the middle here, I have that other Misty hack video and another helpful video. I thank you for spending this time with me. I have, hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon.